Hello and welcome to Kitchen Voyeur. This is Whole Cooking with Evan Hendricks, and he's gonna show us how to braise anything. <laughs> I don't know if you wanna braise anything, but you can braise just about anything. Um, today we're gonna talk about braising chicken thighs, but specifically when it comes to meat, you can braise just about any tough cut of meat. Now we don't necessarily wanna braise a chicken breast, because there's not a lot of fat content, not a lot of moisture content, so they tend to dry out. So you don't want to braise every piece of meat, but anything that's tough, uh, anything that's sinewy, anything that's really gets used a lot as a muscle, um, those are the things we want to braise. So maybe a chuck roast, uh, maybe a pork butt. Um, in this case, we're doing chicken thighs. It's a muscle that gets used often, and so needs a little bit more to break it down and really pull out those flavors. With the vegetables, you could do anything that's really tough and fibrous. So carrots are one of my favorites to braise. Beets are awesome to braise. Parsnips, any really hearty root vegetable mm -hmm. you can braise. And why would we do this instead of just using a crock pot? So uh, I like starting on the stove top. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of times I move from the stove top right in the oven. Sometimes you can jump to a crock pot at that point. But what this really allows us to do is, is really concentrate on each individual ingredient as it goes into the pot, really give it the proper seasoning. Um, and really the goal is to try to layer the flavor yeah. and really build a very robust flavor profile before we get the crock pot stage, which is kind of just dump it all in and then set it and forget it, which can be very convenient. Um, but I like starting on the stovetop and really layering that flavor. Let's do it. Show us Alrighty. how it's done. So for braising, the first thing we want to do is we want to start whether we're doing vegetables or meat. We want to salt it ahead of time and it pulls some of those amino acids to the surface, gives us a really nice browning element. We want to get our pan nice and hot. So we had this heating up a little bit um, and we got a really nice heat going there. We got a little bit of schmaltz in the bottom of the, fan, in the pan, which is chicken fat, rendered chicken fat, um, which is a great, great fat for braising. And in that sizzle that you hear right there, that sound, that's what we want to hear in this scenario. It means that the meat, that the skin is rendering, that we're getting a really nice browning, really nice caramelization, which is going to add to the layer of flavor that we're going to build in this dish. So our chicken goes in. The first thing we want to do is we want to salt the other side. So like we said, cooking on the stove top allows us to season as we go and really layer in the flavors. And then these are some of the other ingredients that we're gonna add here. Um, and a lot of times these are referred to as aromatics. The reason they're called aromatics is because they're incredibly aromatic. They smell really, really nice. So when you start slicing onions and start cooking onions in the kitchen, everybody goes, oh, that smells incredible. It's because it's very aromatic. These three here, celery, onions, and carrots, are known as mirepoix. It's a French term that just means celery, onions, and carrots. And it's kind of the building blocks for all French cuisine, but a lot of cuisine throughout the world. Yes. We're also gonna add garlic, another aromatic that's very pungent, um, and it really is gonna bring a lot of flavor um, to what we're cooking here today. So you'll notice with braising, we're gonna start off on the stovetop searing and really caramelizing and kind of um, building the flavor there. But braising is really about cooking in liquid. So eventually as we go here, we're gonna end up adding a little bit of liquid to our pot so that when it goes into the oven or the crock pot, Either way, we're cooking with liquid that will kind of help even out and, and keep it from being a really harsh, high heat environment to a very low, almost kind of like a spa. So it's just a very nice warm bath that's gonna really break down some of that tough fibrous uh, material that we find in chicken thighs or even in beef. And what this, uh, the chicken fat that you rendered is yes. called schmaltz. It's a, it's a, a Yiddish term, I think. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's, they obviously don't eat pork, right? kosher cuisine. And so in order to get some kind of cooking medium um, or to add really rich flavor to a dish, they would use chicken and they would render the chicken fat out of the skin. And then they would use that as their cooking medium. So it's beautiful. We're cooking chicken in its own rendered fat and it's just going to enhance the flavor. Um, and you could probably speak a little bit to the health qualities of it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a great fat for cooking in because it's relatively saturated, which means it's stable at high temperatures and isn't going to go crazy on you and form these off molecules that you really don't want. So it's very heat tolerant. So you'll notice we've got some really nice browning on our chicken, chicken thighs here. The brown shows that the uh, amino acids, the protein is really caramelizing. It's that Maillard reaction that you might hear about. And that is just 
adding a ton of flavor to our dish that if we were to just throw this in a crock pot, we wouldn't be getting. And so this is the main advantage for starting on the stove top is we're adding so much flavor to our finished dish by just taking a few minutes here at the beginning to really focus on each vegetable individually and each piece of meat individually. Now, Evan rendered this chicken fat starting with the how to break down a chicken episode that we already showed you. And that just is a one more advantage of breaking down your own whole chicken because you can take the, you can take the fat off the chicken, you can melt it down so you have your own cooking fat. So at this point, I think our chicken has a nice browning to it, nice caramelization. We've added a lot of flavor to it. And we're gonna keep all that rendered chicken fat in the pan, and now we're gonna cook our vegetables in it because now it has a lot of flavor in there. So we're gonna go in first with our onions, and we're gonna add just a little bit of salt, again, seasoning each ingredient as we go. Not only will this help add to the flavor of the finished dish, but it's also, like you've said, right, Mark, it's, it's a... It pulls the things use? out. There's a, there's a osmosis, uh, osmotic pressure that pulls water and amino acids out of the uh, whatever you're cooking. So when you use salt, especially kosher salt, because of the size of the granules, they tend to pull water and anything that comes with the water out. And that allows that to be on the outside of the vegetable where it then comes into contact with the heat and the oil to then form these flavor molecules that we're after. So that's why we salt as we go because it helps us define and develop flavor as we go along. And we're not adding a lot of salt. I know no. a lot of people are, are really afraid of the amount of salt in their diet. And this, this isn't the kind of salt that we need to be afraid about, right? We're just seasoning each ingredient as we go. Unless you know you're salt sensitive, um, I, this is not the type of salt to be that worried about. And again, we're not using that much. So again, you'll notice we're just kind of cooking each vegetable for just a minute or two. We're really not looking to caramelize the vegetables here. Um, we're just looking to start pulling out some of their own natural juices, their own moisture, and start layering in all the flavors that we want to be in this finished mm -hmm. dish. I, I can smell it from here, it's delicious. It smells, this is one yeah. of the like best smells in the world, I absolutely love it. So we have onions, we have celery, we have our carrots in there, diced up, and you'll notice, Mark, still here on the bottom of the pot, we have some of those browned bits. Yeah. That's called fond, F-O-N-D. And that is more flavor that we want to get up off the bottom of the pot. So we're going to add just a little bit of water. At this point, you could add wine, you could add stock, you could add um, just about anything, cooking cherry, things of that nature. But this is a process called deglazing, where the liquid is going to actually pull that fond off the bottom of the pot and pull it up into that sauce, again, further fortifying and enhancing the finished dish. Now you'll notice the last thing we've left out here is the garlic, which oftentimes recipes will tell you the first thing to go in is the garlic, and it's, it's one of my pet peeves. It drives me crazy because garlic has a really, really high sugar content. Anytime you've crushed it and peeled it, you'll notice your fingers get really sticky really quickly, and that's because there's a lot of natural sugar. And so if the garlic's the first thing that goes in, the first thing that happens is the garlic ends up burning. The sugars in the garlic burns, and then your whole dish... Tastes like burnt garlic. Tastes like burnt garlic. And that's happened to me before. And so I'm a huge fan of adding garlic in the last minute, couple of minutes, let it just simmer. Pull out some of those aromatic qualities of the garlic, flavor the rest of the broth that we're creating, flavor the rest of the dish. And at this point, we've really brought all these flavors together now with the liquid. And this is what braising is all about. And this is what I love is we're putting it all into, kind of putting all, all our eggs in one basket and mm -hmm it's gonna be a really, really delicious way. It's gonna be super delicious, I can tell from yeah. the smell. So at this point, our liquid's back up to a simmer. We're ready to go back in with our chicken thighs. So these guys just go right back in. We're not really looking to submerge them under the liquid. We wanna keep them up a little bit. Braising is meant to be partially submerged. We don't want our chicken under the stock. Any juices that we got from that chicken that came out, we wanna go ahead and add those to the dish. And this is a critical piece right here, is making sure that before we put the lid on and put it into the oven, we wanna make sure we bring it back up to a simmer. We got a really nice vigorous simmer going. That way when we put it in our preheated oven, we don't lose all that time of bringing it back up to a simmer. So at this point, 
we are ready to kill our heat and put our lid on top and this baby is ready to go in the oven. How long is that going to braise before it's ready? This is um, chicken thighs or something that's going to braise relatively quickly. A couple hours, two hours, three hours? I wouldn't even go that long, you okay. know? If we, if we were doing some kind of a, um, a big piece of meat, like a chuck roast or a pork shoulder, something that had a really, really dense um, yeah. quality to it, Couple, two, three, four hours even. Chicken thighs, good 45 minutes, we're gonna be golden. Awesome. So there you have it, folks. We learned how to braise just about anything, specifically chicken thighs today. Yeah, it's all about layering flavor and bringing out the good stuff before you put it in the oven and just let it set it and forget it. Till next time, this has been Kitchen Voyeur with Evan Hendricks. So stay tuned, we've got more like this coming up. Mm -hmm.